Hey everybody, this is Brody from Brody's Garage. This is episode 33. Today is May 4th, so may the 4th be with you. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'd like to talk to you about the latest in my Nova build. Let's go. All right, so first up, I, in an earlier episode, said that I was thinking about making some sort of a gusset to reinforce the subframe connectors to the chassis. I just wasn't really happy with the fact that the TCI subframe connectors, they bolted here in the front, they bolted back there on the leaf spring perches, but there was nothing in the middle to sort of absorb this torsional twisting energy. So there's already a little... Um, channel here that's part of the factory floorboard and so what I did is I started by fabricating some cardboard templates and I cut those out and then I transferred that over to some eighth inch thick sheet metal that I had laying around. I used some cut off wheels to make the round holes that go around the arches here and then I um, cut the rest out using my my cutoff saw or my cutoff wheel. So there they are they're not terribly beautiful but they're in the car and I think they're gonna serve their purpose well and of course all this stuff is gonna get uh, texture coated with Raptor bed liner so it'll hide all the imperfections but I'm pretty pleased with the results of these and uh, yeah let's move on I believe I already talked about the fuel lines in the previous episode but in case I didn't they're pretty much done my uh, pressure side goes through a uh, 10 a.m. filter there it goes through a flex fuel sensor to test for uh, e uh, ethanol content and carries on up on top of the bell housing up to the fuel rails. The uh, fuel pressure regulator on the front then sends the bypassed fuel back through the return line, which is going through here. I may add a couple more little uh, hose clamps here to, to further secure it, but that goes all the way back uh, along this other rail to the tank. Uh, so the fuel rails are done. As long as we're talking about the fuel system, I was unable to get my sort of reproduction factory style gas filler neck to work with this tank. It needed to be lengthened in the middle. So what I did is I just ran down to Home Depot and I bought some uh, one and a half inch PVC tubing and I just mocked up a little gas filler neck here. I'm going to put some hose clamps on the ends there to secure it, but this is really just a temporary solution to get the car filled up for its uh, initial uh, run. And then I will fabricate probably a nice little stainless steel piece that goes up there and make it all pretty. For the past couple of days, I was working on the battery here. What I decided to do is I was going to mount the battery here in the trunk all along. I knew it was going to be somewhere in the trunk. I wasn't sure exactly where. Ultimately, I decided on this location because I wanted to tuck it behind this lip here because I'm going to upholster the trunk with some panels. And so I'm going to build a panel that starts here and kind of comes down here to the floor. It's going to wrap around the trunk hinge and go across and come back over here to a point and then do a hard cut off here because I've got the ice water tank, which unfortunately I was not able to tuck all the way behind there. So it's just going to have to stick out. I probably will powder coat this black. Getting back to the battery, what I decided to do is I got some one inch square tubing and I miter cut it and I made a uh, rectangular frame that sits into the uh, sheet metal down here. I actually cut into the sheet metal because of the fact that it's not perfectly level and it starts curving upwards here for the wheel well or, or the frame rail, I guess. And so I cut this down into the sheet metal and set it down in there, welded it all around. And then my aluminum uh, battery hold down tray is bolted into that. I used some nut inserts in the frame to uh, have a place to anchor these into. And then of course it has its little uh, hold down clamp set up here with these bars. And uh, today I made my battery cables. I ran the positive cable from here over the wheel well. It continues on in along the door seal area there. It's gonna be covered by the door sill plate. It goes up through the cowl vent area and up there. I'm not exactly certain how I'm gonna finish that off, but there is a plastic plate that goes right up in there. And so I may just bring the cable through that with a grommet and then tuck it up underneath the, uh, the cowl or the underside of the dash. And then I made a grommet right there in the tunnel. And then from there, it goes over here to the starter motor can see it right there. So the positive side is done pretty much. 
The negative side is a much simpler setup and it just goes from there through a grommet and it goes right here to the frame rail, which uh, is right there. So what I did up here is I just drilled a hole uh, about a half inch diameter hole and I stuck a one of those uh, rivet nut inserts in there but because I couldn't get the rivet gun in there to crimp it in I just welded it all around and ground it down flush and there's my negative side I still have to put some ground straps on the engine to uh, tie it to the chassis and then the uh, the main part of the electrical system is underway while I was working on the battery stuff Al Nakata came by today again and worked his magic and as you can see here um, the bulk of the bodywork is is pretty much solid. I mean, the gaps are lining up really nice now. We have just a little fine tuning to do. This is another area that was filled in with weld. If you recall from an earlier episode, I uh, was unhappy with the way the rocker panel lined up with the quarter, and there's kind of a, an odd gap there that almost, well, it didn't almost, it, it actually started creeping upwards as you got towards the back. So I welded it and ground it down solid. Uh, this has now been filled in thanks to Al and smoothed out. He also worked on the front edge of the door and fender here and got this a little smoother. The A pillar is now uh, got its first uh, couple coats of uh, metal filler. And so this is coming along really nice. If you look back at the old videos, you can remember how terrible this was. This, <laughs> this whole area was quite the mess. The door, gap between the cowl and here was about like that. It was huge, about half inch or more. So we welded up the top of the door edge. We cut a slice out of the cowl and bent this down, welded it back up and ground it down smooth. You know, quite a, quite a lot of work has gone into this little, little tri-state area right here. So I'm, uh, I'm thinking that the body work, the bulk of the body work is actually nearing its readiness for primer and um, that makes me very happy. So there you go, some work down there, up there, um, final coat of uh, filler right there. And yeah, remaining bodywork is really just fine tuning at this point. So as far as the bodywork goes, the, the bulk of it is actually done. It's really at the point now where I'm just going to get the car running, um, which what I'm waiting for now is still these uh, stainless headers uh, turbo manifolds, which were supposed to be here about a week ago. Uh, they did say a couple days ago that they would be shipped out this week. So, you know, what can I do? This is kind of par for the course. That really, the whole rest of my setup hinges on those things. I'm just praying that they work out and I can get my turbos mounted, get my cold side finished here. I can get my downpipe and my exhaust run. And as far as the rest of the mechanical stuff, it is getting the uh, the uh, Holly Terminator ECM mounted. Uh, there's a couple more parts of the wiring harness for that that need to be connected to the transmission. I need to connect my shifter linkage, or cable rather, uh, down to the shifter uh, mechanism. And then some primary wiring stuff. I need to put the fuse panel in, uh, make some connections. I gotta get my starter ignition switch connected. And then really the thing is ready to fire. Once it's able to fire, from that point, I'm waiting for a drive shaft and to finish my brake lines and put the seats back in, the steering wheel, um, and get it to where I just have the bare essentials and I can take this thing for a ride around the block maybe. And once we get to that point, folks, it's pretty much ready to go on the trailer. It'll go to Al's place. We will strip it all completely down, take the engine and transmission back out. I know I'm repeating myself here, but that's the process, was to get it mechanically sound, get it running. If there's no more welding to be done, no more grinding, then it goes to Al's, it gets disassembled. Uh, we flip it over on the rotisserie. I'm going to use the Raptor bed liner and reduce it. I don't like the factory sort of super heavy crinkle finish. So I'm going to reduce it with urethane and get sort of a, a very smooth finish for the underside of the chassis. I will make sure all my welds are complete. They'll be ground down flush. Um, Raptor bed liner, uh, seam sealer, of course, before that. Flip it over, uh, fine tune the gaps and bodywork, and, and then we're gonna spray this thing with high build um, uh, polyester primer, block it down, primer it again with urethane primer, block it again probably twice. 
uh, until it's ready for paint. Paint, what am I gonna do about the paint? I keep going back and forth about the color, but you know what it's probably gonna be is my original choice. BMW Black Sapphire Metallic is a color that I still, every time I see it, I go, mm, it's just good, it's just really good. I think about reds, I thought about blues, I thought about grays, I had a rendering done in gray with a stripe, and I think I'm just gonna go back to the BMW Sapphire Metallic, my first choice, um, and call it a day. So with that being said, um, that's where I'm at right now, and feeling good about the progress, and the car is, I mean, just let me, let me turn this camera around and show you. There we go, my friends. It is uh, looking more and more like a complete car every day. Uh, I should point out that there is a little bit of an issue here with the electric fan clearance to the uh, air conditioner pulley. As you can see, it's it's pretty much right up against it right now. There's a, I don't know, 16th of an inch daylight there. This core support will come back slightly. This is not locked in, so I've got a little wiggle room there, but I think I may have to modify these brackets for the radiator. They're, they're kind of cool the way they sort of tuck behind it, but that gap right there pushes the radiator away from the core support. Oh, a good, I don't know, quarter to three eighths of an inch. So that's just more clearance that I can gain by pushing it flush with the core support. I can flip these brackets to their outside and then mount it to some sheet metal here. Uh, or I may think of another plan, but I got to move that fan away from the pulley a little bit further. Uh, once, the uh, the st once the stainless steel turbo headers get here, they go here. Uh, but a different... <clears throat> Once the turbo headers are here, they go on. I've got a couple of different angled couplers and diff that will give me some radius options here to put the turbos, hopefully right where I want them. And then it's cold side, down pipe, exhaust, mufflers out the back. Um, I don't even need to connect the intercooler right away just to get it running. Um, most of the wiring harness is in place for the engine. Uh, I will then get the car running, get it painted, and I will come back and do the final wiring when I'm done with paint. I'm gonna put the sound deadener in. I will then do all of the chassis wiring and put the glass in and the trim and you know, it's gonna be a, a done deal. So my question to you is, how many episodes do you think it's going to take before this thing is a done car? And I know that you can really never truly be done with these things. I'm talking about the bulk of it. I mean, to where it's able to be driven, it's, registered, it's car show worthy, um, completely running. How many episodes? We're on episode 33 now. I'm going to take a guess and I'm going to say that the final episode where I call it done will be episode 65. That does not mean that we're halfway done, but I just think there's going to be a lot of little steps between now and completion time. And uh, I'll try to keep you guys updated frequently as I can and uh, keep adding content here. Drop your comments below, drop your suggestions, and I think I'm gonna call it a day, my friends. You all have a good one. Take care.